Hello everyone, I wanted to go through a quick example of what happens to a company's balance sheet when it makes an acquisition. So the example data that we've got here is available in a spreadsheet that I've got linked in the video below. We've got a company, Big Limited, here's its balance sheet on the left. We're making an acquisition of 100% of the shares in Small for $50, here's what Small's balance sheet looks like. What we want to do first up is work out what will Big's balance sheet look like, its standalone or parent entity balance sheet, immediately after the acquisition. Now we don't want to overcomplicate things here. The only thing that's happened is that we've paid $50 for an asset, where the asset happens to be shares in small. So that's the only thing that's going to change in the balance sheet. So the cash that we've got uh, is going to be the $150 less the $50 that we paid Uh, for the acquisition. Property, plant and equipment doesn't change, it's 250. We now have an account investment in small and it's going to be 50. So the total of assets that we've got is 400. So that hasn't changed. Um, we had 400 of assets, we've still got 400 of assets, we've just swapped cash for the investment. Every other account remains the same. Liabilities remains the same. And contributed capital remains the same. Nothing's happened with contributed capital. Retained earnings of the business hasn't changed. So total equity hasn't changed. And we just want to check total equity plus total liabilities is 400, which balances out our total assets. So uh, the balance sheet balances. So acquisition paid for out of cash. No change to total equity, no change to liabilities. We're just swapping asset classes. Cash goes down by 50, investment goes up by 50. Next example that we've got is, we're taking out a loan for $50, which we use for the acquisition. Now, in this case, cash doesn't change. So cash is 150. Um, we know that property, plant and equipment is going to be 250. Again, we're going to have our investment in small, and that's going to be 50. And our assets, in this case, is going to go up by 450 because we didn't lose the 50 of cash. What we've got now in terms of our liabilities, we borrowed 50 to make the acquisition. So now I've got liabilities of 220. Equity has remained the same. So contributed capital hasn't changed. Retained earnings hasn't changed. Total equity, capital plus equity. So now we've got liabilities plus equity of 450. That make, matches our assets of 450, so our balance sheet still balances. Third way that we could pay for this is we're raising $50 of equity, which we use for the acquisition. So if we're raising equity, our cash isn't going to change. So it's 150. We're going to have property, plant, and equipment 250. Again, we've got our investment in small. It's going to be 50. And again, we'll have our assets is going to be the sum of those three. That gets us 450. Liabilities hasn't changed. 170. So total liabilities remains at 170 in this example. Contributed capital has changed because we raised $50 of equity capital. So contributed capital will be the 200 plus the 50. So really what would have happened is that equity would have gone up by 50. That would have been matched by cash that went up by 50 and then down by 50 to use for the acquisition. So that's why that, the, the net position of cash hasn't changed. And we've now got equity has gone to 280. So let's check total liabilities 170, total equity 280, giving us liabilities plus equity of 450, matching our total assets of 450. So at each point, our balance sheet is going to balance. Next thing that we want to do is think about what would be the case if rather than simply looking at uh, the parent entity, 
let's assume that we're now preparing a consolidated balance sheet for big and small. So this would be the case if um, Big Limited was a, a kind of a reporting entity in Australia or a pre required to prepare consolidated financial statements or any other set of rules. Now here what we need to do is the investment in small is going to disappear. That won't appear in our consolidated financial statements. But the assets and liabilities that were acquired will. We've assumed that the assets and liabilities of the small were stated at fair value at the time of the acquisition. Let's see what happens. First, our cash is going to be the cash that we had on the parent plus the cash that we had acquired. So the total cash that our combined entity has is $110. The total property plant and equipment that we've got is going to be the property plant and equipment of big and the property plant and equipment of small. Um, what we acquired is the investment. We acquired the net assets of small. So we acquired assets of 70 less liabilities of 30. So that's a sort of a net asset position of 40, which we can see here in the equity. But we paid 50 for this. We paid, we bought 100% of the shares for 50. So the difference between the 50 that we pay and the 40 of net assets that we acquire is what goes on in the consolidated balance sheet as goodwill. So goodwill, um, 50 less 40, so that's 10. So the goodwill as part of our balance sheet now gives us total assets of 430 for the combined entity or consolidated entity. Let's see what that's matched with. It's matched by loans of 170. And in this case, we're now going to need to put, I might even put payables first because that would uh, typically appear before loans on our balance sheet. The payables that we have from small along with the loans that we have from big and I'll put total liabilities here is going to be the sum of those two. So the 30 plus the 70 is 200. Contributed capital hasn't changed. 200 plus 30, 200. The retained earnings is 30 giving us total equity of 230. Now let's just check equity, 230, liabilities 200. That gives us our um, liabilities plus equity position of 430 balanced by the assets of 430. So our consolidated balance sheet also balances. Okay, second thing, let's assume that we took out the loan for $50. So what's our position here for our uh, combined entity? We're going to have cash of 150 from big, plus cash of 10 from small. We're going to have PPE of big and PPE of small, 310. Again, we've still got goodwill. That doesn't, we're, we're uh, not concerned about the payment method for our calculation of goodwill. It's going to be the difference between the fair value of the net assets acquired and what we paid for those net assets. That's the 10. Okay. Consolidated or group assets is now 480. Let's see what that's matched by. Again, I'm going to put in here payables. I'll put in here loans. And I'll put in here total liabilities. So payables, 30. Now, we borrowed 50. So the loans is going to be the 220 that we've got from uh, the books of big. So the total liabilities is going to be 250. Contributed capital is still going to be the 200 from big, retained earnings 200 from big. So we don't include the shareholders equity component of Small's balance sheet because we've included the assets and liabilities as the component parts. Let's just check. Liabilities 250, equity 230 gives us 480 matched by the assets of 480. Final example it will do. We're raising $50 of equity capital, so we get capital, and we'll use that to fund the acquisition. So the cash position of our combined entity, the cash of big, 
plus the cash of small. Property, plant and equipment is going to be the property, plant and equipment of big and small. Again, we've got goodwill of 10. And we've got total assets of 480. Um, payables, misspelt. I've got loans and I've got total liabilities, payables, 30. I've got loans of 170 from big, so total liabilities, 200. The contributed capital is going to be the 250 now that we've got, because the 200 they originally had, plus the 50 that we used to raise capital to pay for the acquisition. Retained earnings hasn't changed, 30. So we've got 280 in equity, add that to the 200 of liabilities, that matches our 480 worth of assets. So our balance sheet at each stage balances. So that's how we'll go about accounting for the acquisition in the books of the acquiring company, in this case, big, making a number of different assumptions about the way we pay for the acquisition. Um, what we'll do next up is think about the impact that this might have on the income statement and some valuation ratios that we might want to calculate as a result of that.